ultimately we can't get our own land and get our own homestead and grow our own food and do all this to save us. Yahweh saves us, not food, not our land, not our guns and all this other stuff. Yahweh saves us. So we need to understand this. You know, Yahweh is the author of everything and he's in, he's the director of this and he's in control of everything. It's Yahweh that saves us. Somebody can get all the land they want and they can store up all the food they want. Now we need to be wise in, in the way we, we live our lives. That's not an excuse to live in sin or an excuse to, to not be, uh, you know, a go-getter and, and make sure we're prepared. Absolutely, we should be prepared to the best of our capability, but our faith in Yahweh uh, and understanding of him should, should overrule our, our, our time that we spend stocking up food and doing all this stuff. Now, if Yahweh gave you a dream and told you to do that, if he, you woke up and he told you get a bunker in Alaska and save up food, that's not for me to tell you don't listen to him. But uh, if you're doing that on your own, you know, your own knowledge and your own wisdom, and, and, and you've done the research and you found out this is the least place that will get attacked and, and nobody's coming up to Alaska or, or going to the Midwest or somewhere, you know, and, and if you're doing something like that on your own wisdom, you know, you need to seek Yah and pray to him for confirmation before you start doing stuff like this, or at least preaching stuff that everyone else needs to do stuff like this. You know, so I don't know what's going to happen at the end times on, in, in terms of if I don't have food saved up, where will I eat and all this stuff? I know that, you know, I got a garden full of food right now. And if the end times are coming, I don't care how many guns I have. People are going to get some way to get that food uh, and take it from me. Uh, you know, whether it's the government or people or something else, we can never have so much land where, you know, where, where, where it's all ours. And it's not supposed to be like that. It's all ours. We're supposed to be sharing it with people anyway. You're not supposed to be storing it up and stocking it up for our own and stuff. But then we look at the example of Joseph. He did save the food for the people and he did handle it in a certain way. Uh, so there's a lot, a lot. You know, people say, oh, you live in Florida. Florida's going underwater. They told me that 10 years ago we'd be underwater by now. So am I supposed to be like uh, Noah and preparing a boat in my backyard? So when that happens, I'm ready and prepared. You know, or, you know, my neighbor actually has a boat in his backyard. Not for that reason. He's not even a believer, but he's a captain of ships and he, he's preparing boats in his yard. But, you know, point being is Yahweh will figure out a way and provide for you. If we're listening to him, we'll know when to go. We'll know when to stay. We'll know when to grow or what not to grow. And hopefully, if we're listening, we'll know what to eat and not to eat. Because we should be praying every time we every time we go to eat something, we should be praying about it. Where did this come from? And this is this safe for me? You know, and the kings of Babylon and all these other parts of the world had tasters, people that would taste the food before they ate it to, to make sure it wasn't poison. You know, and we don't have tasters, but we have Yah, and we should have prayer to tell us, don't eat that food. You know, I don't know what's going on, and I don't know, but I'm not eating this. Yahweh told me not to eat this. That's what Daniel did. I mean, uh, Dan, uh, yeah, Daniel and his, his three friends. Look, I don't know. All I know is Yahweh told me not to eat this food. Just give me these vegetables. That's what Yahweh told me. Well, we're going to kill you if you don't eat that food. <laughs> I'm just saying what Yah told me. Yah told me don't eat that food. So if you're going to kill me, whatever you want to do, you got to do, but I'm listening to Yahweh. So we need to learn. We need to learn to hear from Yahweh. That's what we need to do. That's what our life is, to learn to hear from Yahweh. And sometimes it takes the bottom of the pit for us to hear from him. Sometimes people got to be sitting in, in solitary confinement in jail. Some people got to be in, a, in, 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 in the depths of a war and in, 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 in right in the middle of their, their, their little traps where they're about to, you know, they're, they're getting surrounded. Some people, they just got to be on their internet in their house, whatever it is, wherever it is. We need to develop the skill of listening to Yahweh. And it is a skill. It's a skill of not being distracted by the distractions of the enemy around us and by, by, by just slowing down and finding time to listen to him. And you know what? I'm going to say something that might sound funny to some of you, but, but I'm serious. I'm very serious. So, you know, this thing is, 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 is a weapon, the phone. It is a weapon. And it is a weapon of the enemy. It is, it is a wicked thing because it distracts us from Yahweh. And in my trying to just get away from, from, from not using it as much, I found out, and don't laugh, this, I'm dead serious right now. This is, you know, one of the things that every person does is when they go to the bathroom, they take their phone. 
and they start looking through their stuff and everything else. And the number one thing, the first thing I did to start and disconnecting and getting away from the addiction to the phone is this phone doesn't go in my bathroom at all. Now, when I'm in the bathroom, whether I'm reading scripture or a book or a good book or just nothing and just just there. And, and that's what Yahweh wants us to a place where nothing and then he could he could find a way to reach us. And that's going to train me not to take this right before I go to sleep. I don't have this. In my, this doesn't go in my bed. And it doesn't go in my bathroom. Those are the first two steps I'm making to disconnecting. You know, and our next is going to be my car because now it's like maybe 50% of the time in my car. I'm using this 50% less in my car and I want to get to 100% where I, this phone's not going on in my car unless it's an emergency or something else. So, so I can start focusing on, on, on just when I'm driving. That's when Yah speaks to so many people. Before we had phones, Yahweh spoke to people when they were driving, even if they were listening to their radio. That's when he spoke to people. For myself, that's when I got that message from Yahweh when I was driving one place on a dark road and the only radio station that came in was a Christian radio station. And I was like, well, this is crazy. And I listened to the message. You know, but the phone is distracting, whether it's the bathroom, the bed, or the car. You know, we need to try to disconnect. You know, and here I am at my desk. I got my phone. I got my computers and everything else. But even before then, I used to be the type of person when I was out and about, I didn't want to do my business on the road. I wanted to do it when I was sitting down in front of my computer. So I tried not to do too much business as I was out there on the road, even before the intermediate, the media and the, and the text and all this stuff. But now we think, well, if we can get it done on the road, we have less to do when we're home. But we need to make that time for Yahweh. We really need to make that time for you. Now, you know what? Another thing I do, I'll tell you this. This doesn't go in the gym with me. I go to the gym every morning. I love the gym. I go to the gym every morning. This does not go in the, in, in the gym with me. I used to, between exercise and between sets, I used to check, see, catch up on last night's stuff or see something. Now this stays in the car. And I'm telling you, Yahweh speaks to me when I'm praying in the morning. Yahweh speaks to me when I'm at the gym. I have time to focus on what he's telling me to do and what he's not telling me to do. And I don't want these distractions of the things around me. And I'm just listening to that. When I'm driving home from the gym, you know, it's I can't wait to get home and just either research or confirm or just make a video because Yahweh spoke to me when I was out. And the more time we train ourselves for ourselves, the less time we're, we're you know, you know, and focusing on uh, and just not distractions of the world and Yah. And the same thing people do with food. You know, all I used to think about was food. What am I going to eat my next meal? When's my next meal? All this? No. You know, when I fasted, I had so much free time on my hands because I wasn't going to the bathroom and I wasn't eating. And I was like, wow, I got so much extra time on my hands now. Because that's what most people do with their whole life. They just go to the bathroom and eat. And one leads to the other. So when you're fasting, you're, you're, not, you're not going to the bathroom and you're not eating. And you're not thinking about food and all this other stuff. It gives you extra time to think about stuff. So now I try to eat, you know, I spend as little time as, as focusing on food and what I'm eating and everything else. Now I have an amazing wife that makes my food so I don't have to think about all that stuff. You know, but... But it's a big thing. And now I do garden. I take a lot of time in my garden. But what I told you well before, and I'm telling you again, when I'm out there in the garden, I'm thinking of Yahweh. I'm looking at the vines growing, the leaves on the trees and withering trees and what's dying and what's not, what's getting the water and what's not and the sunshine and the time of day and all this. And it all relates back to me to scripture, Yahweh and creation. When I see birds, flowers and fruit, I think Yahweh is so amazing. What a creation. What a creator. It's beautiful. You know, and it's a great thing. So we need to really, you know, focus on, you know, on him and not letting the distractions of this world get to us. Can these things use for blessings? Yeah. You know, some people, there are times where I love my phone because I could, if I'm in the house and I, somebody tells me, oh, look at this video. There was a video last night. Somebody sent me by Paul Washer. You know, it was wonderful. So I was watching it, but then, you know, my computer wasn't working. I wanted to keep watching it. I just flicked that on my phone. I got to finish watching the video. So praise Yah. You know, but those videos will distract you. And next thing you know, you're watching a video about scripture. The next thing you're, 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 you're spending an hour watching a video of how they make ink for pens or something. And you're like, how do I get on this rabbit hole or something? You know, so we need to be careful about these things. But, you know, find the time for scripture, you know, and, 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 and however it is, that anchor, you know, the anchor, you know, something, you know, I try to do with my girls is read the scriptures with them every day. We're doing the read your Bible every day and a whole year and everything else. And, 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 you know, and, and, and my girls, sometimes they're not into it at all, but I want the words to come out of their mouth. 
but it's not just for them, it's also for me. I mean, when I'm here and them read slower than I do, I'm having, I'm, I'm thinking about these things and I'm like, wow, right now we're reading about uh, in First Samuel about David and Saul. And I'm like, wow, you know, it's so great to hear it from my children reading it and me getting to focus on it. It's a beautiful thing. So it's not just for them, it's for me also. You know, so, you know, so praise Yah, praise Yah. I found.